So, for one, this is the code. And notice it's on Jonas' personal repository and not on the official GNOME domain. By the way, if you don't know Jonas, he is a main GNOME contributor. Perhaps he's also a maintainer in some projects. I'm not super sure. Doesn't even matter. He contributes big anyway. That's how it looks. We'll run it in a bit. Um, basically, Shell Mobile is the same code as Desktop Shell with a couple of mods. To build it, we need Jonah's editions of Shell, Mutter, and Settings Daemon. Actually, you can build it in seconds and use it as desktop exactly as is. Although, you most probably don't want to do that because it misses things like the virtual desktops. The source tree is currently based on GNOME 46, so the coding doesn't follow GNOME development. I guess Jonas will rebase it sometime in the future. Okay, let's run it, Chief. In the meantime, I haven't forgotten Cosmic. I just don't have much time to upload, but I do have much to say. Later, maybe? So that's it. And I'm running it on a nested Wayland session, if you're wondering. We can do this. Um, probably it has some different gestures than Shell. Don't know. Opening applications works exactly the same as Shell. Only the animation is different. I like it. Another thing is different is the overview. Windows have side-by-side -side previews, and of course there aren't virtual desktops, as I told you before. Basically, the overall design looks much like Foch. That I haven't checked for a while, almost like a half of year, I think I know what I'll do after. Also, another thing. Here it says, it is the intention that all the changes eventually land upstream in Gnome Shell and Mutter themselves. So basically, the same code, depending the device it runs, it could load a slightly different UI. If I understand this correct, there is a company that took 1.6 millions in donations for making a GNOME phone. After seven years, they have done essentially nothing, and they now learn that GNOME is planning an upstream UI. So Fosh automatically becomes virtually irrelevant, at least irrelevant to GNOME community. And this situation has been orchestrated from the same people. Imagine to ask someone, hey, what's your job, boss? I'm designing two mobile shells. Wait, what? You work in two companies? If you're asking me, before we get an actual GNOME phone, and not just an extra device to pollute the environment sitting next to our Android, it needs two things. First, GNOME Shell itself needs to be rewritten in GTK. Right now, Shell UI isn't just looking out of place. It is literally not functioning. It's not even possible to make a virtual keyboard with it. I mean, a virtual keyboard that works, not a virtual keyboard for the sake of having a virtual keyboard. And second, GTK should be rewritten in another language. And also, that argument that G-Object makes it possible to have bindings in every language should stop. In every reality, you only have bindings with problems and apps that don't scale. And the result? Contributors quitting and users upset as they watch their favorite apps not getting updates. So, if GNOME wants people to seriously trust them about that phone thing and invest their time on developing with GNOME APIs, they should start by running a crowdfunding on those two goals. And if that fails, only then you can come back here and say I was wrong and stupid. Fair enough?